Welcome to A Word for Wednesday. Thank you for joining us. Let's get right to it today. I had this on my mind last week and had it written and ready to go, and then I was called upon to preach next door, kind of last moment, and so this was what was on my mind, so I preached this and put it on YouTube, but this is a little different setting, and some people tune in for this that are not able to tune in for the others, and hey, however you can join us whenever, we're glad that you're with us. I want to talk to us here about the answer is on the way. Are you looking for answers? Just about everybody I talk to nowadays needs some kind of answer, and we need it yesterday. But I think I have a word for you. The answer is on the way. Isaiah 65 and 23. Here's what the Lord said through Isaiah to his people. And it shall come to pass that before they call, before they call, I will answer. And while they are yet speaking, I will hear. Hallelujah. We serve a mighty, mighty good God. God is good. Yes, he is. He's good all the time. And he is a mighty big God. My mind cannot comprehend the bigness of God. I don't think any human mind can comprehend it because we just can't think that big. God is bigger than our comprehension. Where is God? Can we pinpoint him somewhere? God is everywhere. Where did God come from? God came from eternity. You can't put him in time. He's in eternity. He created time for us to live in. He's always been and he always will be. Now I look around and behold the goodness of God in every area of our lives. He has blessed us tremendously. Now there have been times that I have wondered where's God in this? But you got to let some time pass. I've had to I've had to get that into my noggin. <laughs> I'm operating on time. God's not. And when I have wondered where is God in this? I just needed to wait. God was going to manifest himself in a way that could not be denied. I see God's fingerprints everywhere in our lives, in every area of our lives, I see where his hand has been. Now, the Bible teaches us that even God's creation should be enough to convince us there is a God and God is real and God is mighty powerful. The heavens, Psalms 19 and 1, the heavens declare the glory of God and the firmament showeth his handiwork. They declare it. Look, the stars, the sky, the, the, the universes, the galaxies, the immensity of it, the, the mind-boggling dimensions of all these things prove to us there is a God and that God is powerful. The earth, the rivers, the canyons, the mountains, the oceans, the sea, the land, the complexity of nature, of the human body and other animals, Declare to everyone that observe, there is a mighty God. None of this is an accident. You can't, you can't put together the complex human body by accident. Why aren't we seeing more accidents like that? God created us. He is a mighty, powerful God. Yet, I want to remind someone, he is a mighty personal God as well. He is intimately involved in our lives. He sees our pain. He knows our thoughts. He bears our burdens. And he even feels our feelings. Listen to Hebrews 4, 15. For we have not an high priest which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted like as we are yet without sin. 
our high priest, Jesus, the Son of God, God in the flesh, can be touched with the very feelings of our infirmities. Are you sick? He feels that feeling. Are you in sorrow? He feels that feeling. Are you sad? He feels that feeling. Are you tempted? Are you in a test? Are you in a severe trial? Our Christ feels that feeling. Are you in distress? Are you in despair? Are you in depression? He feels that feeling. Our God is touched with a feeling of our infirmities. Because of that, the next verse says, we can boldly approach him. Let us, therefore, because of what came before, Brother L.O. Collins taught me that years ago, years ago, when you see the word therefore, look at the verse before it and see what that verse is there for. Verse 16, therefore, based on verse number 15, that he's touched with the feeling of our infirmities, we can come boldly unto the throne of grace. Oh, hallelujah. Now, we, we don't order God around. God's not our servant. But we can approach him boldly. We can approach him with confidence. God, I believe you're going to hear me because you gave me permission to approach you. You remember in the book of Esther, Esther in that society could not just walk into the room where the king was, even though he was her husband. Because anybody that approached the king without being sent for, without being called for, they were to die immediately unless he raised over them the golden scepter. Then their life was spared and he found out what they wanted. Listen, our king has already bid us to come. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden. Repeatedly, he says, call unto me. Pray, seek my face. Hey, I want to hear from you. I want you to come into my presence. He's already invited us and he has held out the golden scepter over us. You will not be rejected, my friend. You may have been rejected by your governor, by your senator, by your court system. You may have been rejected by people that you love. You may have been rejected by people that you think you can trust. But God has not rejected you. Come unto him. Come boldly unto him. Ask him what you will, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in the time of needs. Ask God to meet your needs. Tell God your problems. Share with him your burdens. And he will hear you. And he will answer you. Now we have been exercising our privilege to approach God for our needs on a very regular basis lately. Oh, I have prayed until I'm sure if others were listening, they would be tired of hearing my prayer. But God never tires of hearing our request. He never gets tired of it. He is listening and the answer is already on the way of that, I am sure. Do you remember the old song? Oh, yes, the answer's on the way. This I know. My Jesus said it. I believe it, and it's so. Our Heavenly Father knows our needs before we pray. And the answer is already on the way. And that's not just a song that somebody wrote up you know, an author, a man, may be correct and he may not be correct. That's a song based on the Bible. Remember my text? And it shall come to pass that before they call, I will answer. There it is. And the answer's on the way. This I know. Before I ever approach God, God has formulated an answer. God is sending the answer your way. God is aware before you ask him. 
He has an answer prepared for you and for me while we are yet speaking. Hallelujah. Keep asking, friend. Do not get weary in praying. Listen to what Jesus said concerning this. I say unto you, ask, and it shall be given you. Given you. Seek, and ye shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. For every one that asketh receiveth, and he that seeketh findeth, and to him that knocketh it shall be open. Oh, I'm talking to you today, friend, right from my heart, right from the Word of God. The answer is already on the way. Keep seeking Him. Keep taking your needs to Him. Keep trusting Him. He cares for you. Oh, yes, He does. He cares for you. He loves you. The answer is is already on the way. Just this week, since I wrote this, wrote this little thought down. In fact, the very next morning, early in the morning, the Lord came and spoke a special word to Kelly and I. And we have been rejoicing. Oh, all our problems gone? No. But we know that God is aware. We already knew it, but we have fresh evidence of it. God is in control. Listen to me, friend. Keep asking. Don't, don't get weary with him. Don't, don't quit. Don't, where, where else are you going to go? God is your help. And before you pray, the answer is already on the way. That's our word for Wednesday. God bless you, friends, for coming to join us. And come and see us again real soon, will you? God bless you.